Monday, Tuesday, happy pens. Wednesday, Thursday, flashy pens. Friday, Saturday, fountain pens. Sunday Shopper. FBGeeks.com is all about the Sunday Shopper. So much so that we decided to give it its own slot on the site. There'll be pens, witty banter, beautiful women. Well, probably not. Pretty women. Catch the Sunday Shopper every Sunday, only on FBGeeks.com. Indulge the madness. Welcome to the third episode of the FP Geeks Sunday Shopper for Sunday, January 29th, 2012. I'm Dan. And I'm Eric. So we've got a few pens that we cannot wait to show you this week. Do we have to show all of them? There might be some I want to bid on. Well, that's fine. You'll just have to <laughs> bid against our watchers. Well, let's go to the page. Where is that page? Here we are. Sunday Shopper for January 29th, 2012. Well, you have quite a few things here. I'm already... The first thing I saw was the Pelican fountain pen ink. Can we just take a look at that real quick? Absolutely. Let me make sure that opens in a new tab. I just don't see that bottle of Pelican ink uh, very often. No. And it caught my eye immediately. I might have to bid on that one. I thought it was really cool. It's got no bid so far. It doesn't seem like anybody's too interested in it. It has less than two days to go from right now when we're recording. And so it's going to end on Monday at just before noon Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and $5 for shipping is what I saw. Yeah, not too bad at all. I don't even care what color ink's in it. I like the bottle. <laughs> it's uh, very reminiscent of uh, J. Urban ink it, bottles. Very, very much so. But it looks wider. Uh, it, uh, hopefully you can put the pen in there better than the the, the Urban inks. Um, the, the, the bottle or uh, the box that it comes in, I think, looks really cool. Right. I, I, I wonder if, the, is, if you go into a pen shop in Germany, is this what they give you for Pelican ink? I have no idea. Because that's not what we get here. No. In my spare time, I'll investigate that. What else have we got here? Well, uh, what what did you pick for us? I was in a wall mood this week. As All right. Wall ever sharp. So I sent you these first three links here to some wall pens. Um, this first one here. They call it the seller who is... Uh, fire break line who uh, we know not personally but sells lots of pens yeah a ton of pens a ton of pens has, has called it the go the wall ever sharp golden tiger eye striped fountain pen and there's quite a few pictures i had never heard I, I, i'm not a huge expert on wall fountain pens but i had certainly never heard of a tiger eye wall fountain pen so i went in search of information for this and in I was looking for information for the other two wall pens that I sent you and I just could not find anything any good information online regarding the pens that I had submitted for Sunday Shopper uh, but I did look into my reference library and I have a few books that I use on occasion when I can't find things online I'll dig into my books and the particular book I used this time is looking at books for information man that's old school i know isn't that old school but <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's your only option and and you know if you can't find it online and you can't find it in books it's very difficult to find information you have to go to people who have collections that feature the pens you're looking at and hope that they'll share information with you which of course they will because we're all fountain pen people anyway the book i'm using today is this fountain pens and pencils the golden age of writing instruments second edition um and Looking through just the pictures of the Wall Eversharp pens, I, I, first of all, I, I looked in the index uh, for anything that said Golden Eye under Wall Eversharp. Couldn't find anything about that, but I matched the, this gold, this tiger pen up with a, a picture. Sorry for the extra noise of the book, and I'll just get back to the pen. This uh, is really the Wall Pacemaker pen. It's a plastic pen. It was made from 1938 to 1941. Uh, it came in a variety of plastic colors. Uh, the particular picture that's in the book that I'm holding is green plastic, but it has the very same stripes here. It's the same striped, okay. I don't know, pattern, almost a pelican type pattern to it. Um, and this one, the, the, there, he's calling it Tiger Eye. I don't know if it was officially called Tiger Eye or or not. It's a plastic pen uh, made in late 30s, uh, early 40s, and it just caught my eye. 
more than anything else it's one of those pens that was just hey look at me and so there i i went and took a Absolutely. look at it and, and decided okay let me look at some more wall pens um as far as the price it's sitting right now at a little under fifty dollars it still has five days to go i have no idea what this is going to go for i don't think you find too many pacemakers up for sale um i'm going to hold off on this one but i think it's certainly worthy of a thought uh, if you want to think about bidding on this one if I would take this pen, if it was a seventy-five dollar buy it now, I would probably go for it. Absolutely, I think it's pretty cool, and so is the book. Uh, it's nice to have reference books available. I, I'm really sad that they're not available as ebook versions because each one weighs at least five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> they just really go all out when they're publishing these books. And the next two walls I found were gold seal. Uh, a little more information about them, of course, online. But again, I, since I was in the book anyway, I I stayed in the book. And I'll just flip to that page now. These uh, oversized gold seals were made from 1929 to 1932. Uh, this one has two little gold bands. And if you will look at the other one, we'll see that it has get down to the picture this is an art deco band so it's it's got a wide wow. band in the middle that has these pictures aren't the best this is probably the best of all pictures this is sort of an art deco type design in it and the two bands are spread out on either side of it i really like that cat band design i like it too um move this one out of the way for a second this uh this seems more classic to me as far, we're I'm only talking about cap bat cap band design right now, right. and this one seems not as classic, but still really catches my eye as something that should be in my collection. And I don't think they're going to go for too much. There's lots of activity on this one, nine bids, and it's up to fifty three dollars. I cannot guess how much this is going to go for. It, I don't think it could go for more than one hundred and fifty dollars. They're 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 vintage. They're they're old, but I think they're fairly common. You see these quite a bit. Um, this one has four bids, not as much activity. It's at thirteen dollars and fifty cents, but the reserve is not met. I don't know what the reserve is on this one, of course. Yeah, and I, I'm not familiar enough with these to give a good estimate. I, uh, I think I'd have to go for this one, even though uh, I don't think the pictures are as good. It just it it catches my eye more. If I had to choose between one or the other, I would go for this one. Um. Not that I'm in the market, but, you know, since we sit down every Sunday and go through eBay, I find that I'm in the market for a whole lot of different pens that I never really considered before. <laughs> and I suppose, you know, I haven't looked, but I bet you can find this book even on eBay from time to time. Not that it's a hugely expensive book for the amount of information that's in it. If you pick it up for $75, it's a, it's a great deal. And do you want to jump into your Aurora 88s or talk about, oh, wait a minute, you've got a, an M800 here. Where did this come from? Yeah, I, I found that. Had to throw that in there. We can do that after I talk about the Auroras. But I got so excited here with an M800. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's coming from Germany. So, yeah, I just, I found this. It's a, the blue is fantastic. Um, but right the now, price really was, was what compelled me to post this. 21 bids, it's only up to $150. Now, it's going to have to go higher than that, but it only has one day and five bids. It ends Sunday, which is today for our listening audience at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, in the M800s, it is the blue one that I want. Oh, yeah? Yes. The, the M1000, I want black, and the M800, I want, I want blue. I don't want, necessarily want a medium nib on it, though, but, you know, if you get it, in, if I could pick this up for $150, I'd buy five. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, geez. Yeah, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Now, it's, yeah, lovely. Coming from Germany, from somebody who's had many transactions and 100% positive feedback, there are no returns or exchanges on this pen, and I don't know what he's going to want for shipping. $10. $10 for oh, shipping. You can spend $10 if you cheap. order it from New York. Yeah. So, oh, I'm going to put that one on my watch list just in case it <laughs> See, 21 people are already watching it, and at least half of those people know what the pen is worth. So oh, yeah. it's, it's not going to go for under $200. It just can't. Beautiful pen. Okay, back to your babies, which are the Aurora 88s. Which one should I click on here? Um, you can just start with the 
the first one there. Now, unfortunately, I think this one has ended, um, but it pr provides a good example of, of the 88. Okay, this one was an ad at Fountain Pen Network. And oh, did he remove he, the pictures? He not only took away the price, he took away the pictures. Oh, uh, okay. Everything. Well, we'll skip that one we'll then. Skip that one. Maybe we'll even take it out for the. <laughs> Who's here? Now, this is one I found at Fountain Pen Classifieds. Um, this one he he has some other pens that he listed there but oh, if you keep scrolling down that one okay i'll keep going <laughs> keep going keep going <laughs> all right so here we go um a decent example of uh, an 88 at a at a good price um i'm not seeing the price i think if you go down it's at the the end of his $109 shipped in the continental United States. Somebody needs to buy this today. If it yeah. isn't gone by the time this podcast gets uh, aired, uh, one of our listeners will surely. This is, does it say anything about whether or not it's working? I, I think it is a working model. Okay, so it, it's it's good to great condition, but not perfect or mint. So this is a user's uh, Aurora 88, uh, which is, of course, why everybody wants to collect pens is so you can use them. This isn't something that you're going to have to take and put away in your safe. This is something oh, you no. can ink up and use every single day, and I'm 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 sure you're going to love this pen. That's it, and it's an absolutely fantastic price. Yes, it's it's including shipping, one hundred nine dollars including shipping. Uh, yeah, if I needed one, I would I would certainly go for this one. That's really outstanding. So and, uh, oh, and that's at fountainpenclassifieds.com. Okay. Right. Another great I, place to look. I couldn't actually find any on eBay, um, not of the, the vintage variety anyways. So I had to go out on the web and search for those. Um, my main source of information is this, this post at FPN um, by Diplomats. It's the Aurora 88 Dynasty. He covers a lot of information there. Be sure you go there and read that. I'm just going to highlight some key points of uh, three of the, the most common models, really, the, the 88, the 88K, and the 88P. Um, Eric, if you want to head over uh, to my website for some high-resolution pictures, we'll start taking a look at those. Um, here is your website. This is an 88P. Do you want to start with that one? Uh, let's start with the 88 since it was the first one introduced. Um, these came out in 1946, and they were a very popular pen. They were actually in, in inspired by the Parker 51. I mean, the the shape is as, is evident of that, and it's I think has improved on the design. It's larger, it's thicker, it, it features uh, a piston filler and also a flexible nib. And there's actually the original 88 came was was available in 17 different nib sizes. So I, I I can't even imagine all the different kind of nibs they had, but there was one for every choice. I so, I think we've talked about uh, the difference between the Parker 51 and the Aurora 88 uh, probably on several occasions. Uh in my mind too, the the Aurora 88 is obviously it's a copy of the Parker 51, but they improved on it quite a bit. I like yeah. that the girth is 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 much more comfortable. The the nib is not as hooded, and I mean my Aurora eighty eight is very flexy nib. It's it's wonderful. It's just wonderful, and it's a piston filler. You can't go wrong with a piston filler. No, absolutely not. And the eighty eight it came in you know a lot of varieties, a lot of different nibs, but also it featured several different caps. Um, one of the most popular is the Nick Argenta, and this will have Nick Argenta stamped on the the back of the cap and it was uh, a special coating that was uh, more durable than than chrome or, or silver and it, it was very sought after and it still is today uh, they also had gold filled caps chrome caps silver caps solid gold caps and then also um, pins that the body and the cap was gold filled and where they were solid gold as well solid gold now you see those Every once in a while, hit the market for a very pretty penny, but they're gorgeous. If you oh, like, yeah. if you like a solid gold pen, that is a gorgeous pen. My my favorite cap is the Nick Argenta. I I would have to say so as well. Now I've never actually seen a vintage Aurora eighty eight with a silver cap. I haven't either. 
Um, I've seen a lot of a lot of chrome and a lot of Nick Argenta, but I've never seen a silver cap. Right. That's going to go on my list for the LA Pen Show just to see if anybody has it. Um, although I, I have to have to say that you don't see a lot a lot of vintage pens at the LA Pen Show. It's not one of the shows that's known for vintage pens, but you do see some. And if people have vintage pens, they that. If they have Italian vintage pens, they're going to have an Aurora 88, and hopefully someone will have one with a silver cap, because now it's on my list. Yeah, I'd like to see one. Me too. So the original 88 was made from 46 until 1953 when the 88K was introduced. Um, it was estimated that I think just over 1.7 million 88s were made, and and then the 88K was introduced. There are a few small differences between the 88K and the 88. Uh, most notably is the section. Um, it was either a, a different formula of hard rubber or it was made from celluloid. Um, I, no one's really certain on that. And then the turning knob was changed from being made from hard rubber to celluloid to match the pin body. And the clip changed. Uh, correct. Yeah, it doesn't have that that smooth, rounded profile of the eighty-eight. Right, and it has some decoration running down the middle of it. And I don't have an eighty-eight K. Is, is that a cutout? Does it go all the way through? Or is no, it it's it's more like a kind in, of in, indentation print. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And so this this was a piston filler as well. The the piston seal was changed from a combination of rubber and felt disc to a a plastic piston head so it was it was more durable and it was probably had a, a better seal and since we're talking about the the pistons in in the aurora 88s the original aurora 88 has a piston that is difficult or impossible to repair replace um you can replace it with um similar materials i mean rubber and felt if you really wanted to it would be very difficult i i i've sold and repair a lot of vintage 88s and i use um o-rings i put two o-rings in there on the piston shaft and it it works just as good as i mean an original working piston so is there anything inside of an original aurora 88 uh, that if it breaks it cannot be replaced Yes, uh, and I, I've run into several of those. The the piston shaft, and I have a, a detailed post of this on the website that we can link to in the show notes. The the piston shaft is th threaded, and the the packing material goes over those, and then another cap is is screwed on to that piston shaft to keep the material tight. And if those threads strip, or the the nut to keep that all compressed strips it's pretty much Im impossible to fix the filling system and i've i've got a couple of those pins so yeah you can you can see there it completely disassembled did you use you said the piston screw uh the the piston unit i think i should have uh, a picture this, of just the, that right there's the piston unit and this one uh, that'll give a little better picture so you can see the the thick black disc on the the right side of the piston unit. There's a, a black plastic nut that screws onto the end of that that compresses the unit and keeps it all together. The if the threads on that nut or the sh the shaft become stripped, it's virtually impossible to fix. Okay, so those that would make so if somebody's looking to buy a vintage Aurora eighty eight. Is there a particular question they should ask? Um, basically, just does it fill with water and does it fill full? Okay. And if if you hold the pen up with with the nib pointing down, um, nothing should leak out. I mean, if if any drops come out, like more than three or four drops, the the piston probably isn't creating a perfect seal. Right, which may or may not be fixable. Right. It, it, but, it all depends on the condition of that piston shaft and, and the nut holding the packing material on. Right, which you couldn't really determine until you tear the pen apart. Um, but if you're buying a vintage Aurora 88, it, if it doesn't hold water, if it won't suck up water, pass on it. 
because it might be a pen that is not repairable, correct? Right. Okay. I mean, un unless you can talk the guy down and get it at a decent price, but, um, you know, that's all up to you and how much time and money you want to invest in it. Right. Sorry, I took you on a tangent. We were no, at the that, 88K. That's, that's all right. Um, so, so very similar to the original 88. Um, this even had the same, you know, versions of the cap. It came, um, except for the Nick Argenta. It was, the Nick Argenta coating was, was very costly to produce, so they did away with that. But you could still get it in, in gold-filled, solid gold, silver, chrome, and all that. Um, and after this... They did come out with an Aurora Duo cart in 1954, and this was more for the the school market for kids. It was released in four different colors. It had a, a plastic body. Um, I believe the colors were, were gray, black, burgundy, and green, and it, it featured a a cartridge filling system with with that metal piece there, and a cartridge would cartridge would go on each side of it. So when you, you always had a backup. And when one cartridge was empty, you would remove it, flip it around, and insert the new cartridge. And it had a, a little... Like a ball bearing. Yeah, like it was, it was a ball... Uh, a ball bearing on a little tiny piece of chain type stuff. Yeah, that was connected to the, to the end of the barrel on the inside. So when that cartridge, that empty cartridge was removed, it would rattle around in there. Which was and supposed to? N notify the, the user that... You know, one cartridge was empty, you, you need to refill it. Exactly. It was just a constant reminder that, hey, you don't have a spare cartridge here. <laughs> it's kind of ingenious, really. Yeah, it's actually a, a really nice design. And I, I got one of these once, uh, and it took me forever to figure out, why is this little ball <laughs> bearing hanging on a piece of chain here? What's going on? <laughs> and so there, there were a couple design differences. You can see the ends are very flat. They come to a, you know, a blunt end. Um, the, the cap is much shorter than what you'll find on an 88. And uh, the, uh, this began production when? Let's take a look here. This was 1954. So, and I want to say already that it's looking more modern uh, than the original Aurora 88. Uh, I yeah, don't I know if so. it's more modern or if it's... Uh, it, maybe it was more economical to design this way because it was meant really for... Uh, this is the school school market, right? And and this was um, designed by someone different, a different guy than who designed the eighty eight and the eighty eight K. So um, they wanted to keep it, you know, in the eighty eight family, you know, very similar design, but but change it just enough. Right now, does anybody know where the eighty eight P comes in? Yes, that was actually a, a few years later in nineteen fifty eight. Um, so this pen it's actually quite a bit different than the previous models it's th it's much thinner i mean noticeably um caps do not interchange with the 88p from the the 88 and the 88k uh the, the clutch it, it won't catch on there and they'll just they'll fall off really right that's much thinner uh, right and th the cap it now has you, like a, a flat angled surface to the end of the cap um, that picture doesn't really show it. I'll try this one. There, you, you can kind of see it there. And then it has that same clip as what you would find on the 88K. Right. It's still a nice looking pen. It is. It's really nice. Um, just, you know, I, I prefer the, the thicker pens of the 88 and 88K. Now, do you have a preference between the 88 and the 88K? Um, I would probably go with the original 88. And is there a reason for that or just because it's more vintage? Because um, I would too. I'll admit that I like the 88 over the 88K, uh, uh, but only because it's more original in my mind. It's, it's you know. Well, I, I like the, the ebonite section and piston knob, but I, I also don't care for the 88K logo on this section. Um, it features a very large K. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of one. Right, but it does have a very large K, but that differentiates it from the what came before it, the eighty-eight. It does. I just I I didn't care for it. Was it was sort of sort of out of place. No, my favorite is the original eighty-eight, very much so. And 
I, if you're interested at all in any of the 88s, I, I suggest you just give this a read. It's an easy read. It's quick. You don't have to buy an entire textbook to get really good history on the 88. Um, and it's, I would even bookmark this page if you're looking for uh, an 88 perhaps on eBay or some other place just so you can refer back to it because nobody's going to keep all of this in their memory. But as right. long as it's online, it's available. Um, and I, I don't mean to, to pimp my website or anything, but I, I keep a lot of my sold pins up for people to reference. I mean, f for price, but also my, my pictures there. I keep fairly high resolution pictures there so you can check them out. And I also have writing samples of each pin so you can kind of see the variety of, of nibs that I've had and, and the lines that they make. Right, and I think everybody should do that. When you when you post things online, whether it's in a forum or at your own website, uh, it's, I think they should stay there forever because people will find them. Somebody's going to be looking at these pictures in 10 years. And it, well, it just and becomes... Especially the, the price because it gives people a good reference of, you know, what they should be paying for pens, what they should be selling for pens. Um, it, it's hard when, when you're not familiar with a pen or you can't find it to you know, what do I sell this for? Do I is is it worth more than I paid for it, or do I sell it for uh, what I bought it for? Is so right. I always keep my prices up there, but I just you know strike through them and, and make sure I mark it as sold. Right, and the fountain pen community thanks you for that, Mr. Smith. Now well, you said your website, you meant uh, it's called Passion Du Jour, but it's danzaman.com. <laughs> It is. Um, don't go there expecting any new content ex except for possible um, for sale listings. I, I haven't updated it with any personal content for for a long time. You've been but. a little busy with another site. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> All right. What other? Okay. We already talked about the ink. We talked about the M800 that I'm going to keep my eye on. What is this you found? This uh, Delta is... I thought it was just a, a cool looking pen. Um, it was a good price when I found it. It looks like it's still a good price. Uh, $152 with two days to go. Wow, that is a nice looking pen. And no reserve, so it's going to sell. What, do we know what this is? Um, no, I don't. He, okay. he says it's whatever the name A-I-N-U is. Okay. I'm going to, uh, without knowing, I'm going to guess it's an indigenous person. Right. Um, We'd have it, to read all about that. I knew means mankind. Okay. Mankind. In what language? Having a clue. Means mankind. It is an ind indigenous uh, people's collection. Okay. A beautiful pen. No so reserve. He, he says it retails for eight ninety five. dollars um, I'm sure retail on, or street price on this was probably, I don't know, six hundred, five fifty, dollars maybe. So, you you pick it up for for two two fifty. I mean that's a heck of a price. Right. Did you catch the filling system? I'm scanning. It's got to be I cartridge did not. converter. Should we look at those pictures one more time? Since we're here, since we're here. Well, it is a Delta, so you never know. It could be a piston filler. I'm not seeing a window. But I I don't see anything in the description either. Strange. Well, I'll come back and take a look at that one. I think it's a, a very nice looking pen. Um, I I'll will at be least bidding keep on an it. eye on it. Let, let someone else have that one. Oh, you found another Skyline, did you? Yeah. Uh, this one with an incredibly flexible nib. Yeah, that's pretty much all you need to see right there. Look at that. Wow. But it's a fairly large pen. He says uh, five inches long, um, goes easily goes from fine to a broad line. He had a buy it now on there of one hundred and seventy eight dollars. Hmm. Um, I I wouldn't pay that much for it, but you never know. Sometimes those flex nibs, I mean, they can go outrageous. Sometimes that's a well. The picture he has, he doesn't have a writing sample, which is unfortunate. But he does have a really nice picture of the nib being flexed, and it looks like it. It can handle the job. I wonder if uh, Julie, a.k.a. Okami, is going to be keeping her eye on this one. Because she was looking for a skyline, or at least she... Oh, she liked that skyline with a really interesting pattern on it. Right. And a 1920s something or other. 
Yeah, this I, I don't really have any you know information on this, but it just looked like a cool pen. That's a ready point. I've never heard of that, but I'll tell you, it looks very much like uh, a wall all metal pen, except right. the section doesn't have the metal. It's it's got two days left, and it's only at seventeen bucks, so can't beat that. So if it's made in the same era and a copy of the wall, it should also have a flexible nib on it. Oh. Yes, it, it, I would I would have guessed this to be a, a wall pen if I didn't know that it was a ready point that I'd never heard of. Um, he does say it has a 14 karat gold nib, um, flexible with a medium tip. So, man. Well, you know, if you could pick this up for $20, that's, that's a no-brainer. Heck, even 30 or $40, I'd, I'd pay for this. Yeah, that's, and it, it says restored, which means uh, I'm sure it has a sack in it that's been restored. And it, it's a nice looker, too. And, I, you know, it's got the heart breather hole. It, it's so much like a wall, I can't stand it. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a cool pen. Had to include that. So which one are you going for this week? Any of them? I, I'm, I can't buy anything right oh, now because the LA huh? pen show is coming yeah. up. Well, since you're here, let me see if I can find one that caught my eye. I was uh, on a Mont Blanc kick this past week. I was really looking for information on a Mont Blanc 139 vintage. Uh, Not that I would buy one because they're so expensive, but I was really looking for the differences in their models and their their ink windows and pricing information. But while I was looking for a Mont Blanc 139, I came across uh, Astoria pens. Oh, wow. Which really look exactly like a Mont Blanc 139 and you know it just needs the the Mont Blanc star up there instead of the Astoria logo and what you have here is something that is just the tiniest apparently just the tiniest bit smaller than the Mont Blanc 139 but it's modern and gonna last you know much longer and you don't have to be used you don't have to use your kid glove so much and, and worry that you're going to break a $3,000, 3500 pen. Um, Do you know what the size is on this pen? Uh, I don't have it in front of me, so the answer is no. <laughs> okay. It looks like there's a, a price there on the Yeah, it's page. all in the, the, this is the price in euro if you're in Europe, and this is the price if you're not in Europe. So it's a $1,500 pen. Wow. Which is not a cheap pen. But and if you're comparing it to the price of a, a vintage Mont Blanc 139, you, you get two of these pens. <laughs> and and so what are, it looks like it's a, a button filler. Um, it You can order it uh, as a button filler or a piston. Oh, very nice. And I, if, if I had to, I don't know which one I'd choose. <laughs> because well, I like them I, both. I'm going to have to check this website out. Yeah, that's uh, AstoriaHamburg.com. So uh, made in, made by hand by one gentleman. Well, length, capped, 141 millimeters. Fairly large pen. We can even do that in, in our crazy system that we use here in the States. 141 millimeters. Five and a half inches. Yeah, that's a big pen. Big pen, big pen. Um, and the barrel diameter is nearly 15 millimeters. This is a nice sized pen. This one might make me forget about the Mont Blanc 139 just because it's the <laughs> same pen and it's modern. And I, it, you know, when you get, if, if I were going to buy a Mont Blanc 139, first of all, it's very, very expensive, 3000 minimum for anything that's decent. And then I would just worry about that pen. Every time I inked it and, and wrote with it, I would say, oh, please don't break. Please don't break. You know? Oh my God, what if it rolled off your desk? I know, terrible things like I'd that. I'd have a heart attack. <laughs> so this one has really caught my eye this week. Now, maybe there'll be one that we can look at at the LA Pen Show. And if that happens, all bets are off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So that's that's my show for the week. How about you? Got anything else for us? Um, no, I'm all out. Uh Thanks for sharing those walls with us and especially that Astoria. And uh, everyone, thanks for joining us this week. Thanks for pointing us to the history of the Aurora line. And thank you for sharing your website with us. Thank you, You're listeners, welcome. for joining us. And uh, happy bidding and happy buying. And send us emails to let us know what you're buying because we like that. 
uh, Writing Rav uh, actually wrote to us, uh, said that he didn't buy anything that we had in the Sunday Shopper, but that the Sunday Shopper inspired him to go to eBay and walk away with a $15 Estabrook vintage something or other that once he gets, he's going to share some pictures with us. Nice. Yeah. So have a great weekend, everybody, what's left of it, and have a great week, and we'll be back here next Sunday. See ya. Bye. Hello there. I'm a vintage fountain pen. And I'm a modern fountain pen. Hey, vintage, have you seen my cheeky, sleek, and fabulous and totally exotic streamlined design? Hmm, that's very nice, modern. Did they just take you off the assembly line this year? No, just today. Oh, gracious me. Bless you. Um, <laughs> thank you. No problem. FBGeeks.com. <laughs>